Hi, this is Richard Scoville, uh, and I am here to talk about uh, P-charts, um, and in particular the issue of uh, detecting changes uh, using, uh, using P-charts in the way that most improvement teams use P-charts. Um, this, uh, this, this is a simulation. Uh, that is done in Microsoft Excel using an add-in package, uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation package called At Risk, uh, which gives us some facility to uh, uh, to model the distributions here. In this case, uh, the binomial distribution uh, with the uh, sample sizes and uh, p-values uh, noted on the uh, on the screen. Um, we begin the simulation with. Uh, a kind of a typical improvement, uh, improvement team situation, uh, starting with a process uh, operating at very low reliability, about 20 percent. We've collected uh, 20 uh, data points, um, and then we've made a change in that process that's boosted the reliability to 50 percent. We're using a uh, standard P chart uh, with baseline data. Uh, uh, on the first 20 data points, uh, maintaining that uh, that mean, uh, extending that mean into the future, uh, plotting the new, the post-change data uh, uh, against that same uh, mean. So we can see that as we uh, run replications of this uh, situation, um, P-chart is doing an excellent job of detecting this change. Um, just about every time we uh, uh, collect a random sample of data, uh, the p-chart with these parameters, the, the p-chart is uh, uh, giving us a signal almost immediately uh, that indicates uh, that that shift in the process has been successful. So uh, this is a pretty good situation. The, the sample size of 20. Um, it seems to be in there, not, they're not all 20. I mean, the, the, we're, we're varying from about 18 to 21 or 22 here. Um, but given that ballpark sample size, uh, we have a P chart that's uh, giving us very sensitive uh, detection of this change. Uh, our team has improved. Uh, let's move on. Our team is now ne needs to move from uh, 50 percent to 75 percent, um, and we're going to keep the same sample size uh, and uh, see how the P chart does uh, with a sample size of 20, moving from 50 percent reliability, 75 percent reliability. And here we can see that uh, uh, we're not doing quite as well. Um, that signal is is. Uh, Signal is triggered, special cause is detected in the, f the first couple of data points um, fairly often, but uh, uh, not as reliably as before. And although we do see uh, the shift rule being triggered on just about every replication, that is a succession of uh, eight uh, points on the same side of the uh, center line uh, seems to fire uh, just about every time. Let's move it on up. Uh, our team is moving from 75% reliability to 90% reliability. Uh, uh, the first thing you're going to notice on this series is that the upper control limit has now disappeared. Um, so it's no longer possible to detect points above the third control limit. We've still got the warning limit visible, um, but that rule is not being triggered uh, very often, uh, two out of three points above the warning limit. The shift rule, uh, eight consecutive points, still tends to be triggered uh, fairly reliably. Um, but remember, we've got to get uh, uh, at least eight data points past the change uh, to see that rule. If we increase the sample size at this point from 20 to 30, our upper control limit reappears. And uh, points that are 
uh, up in the 100% range now uh, are going to be above that third control uh, limit. Uh, and so we see that rule triggered uh, occasionally. Um, we're getting uh, better detection of two out of three points above the uh, control limit. And again, that shift rule is being uh, triggered fairly often. Let's go to the holy grail of uh, uh, clinical process improvement, which is level two reliability moving from 90% reliability to 95% reliability. Well, in this case, the upper control limit and the upper warning limit are gone. Uh, the only rule that's useful here is the shift rule of eight successive points above the control limit. Um, and we're seeing that that rule is triggered, well, not that often. And this is with a, a, a sample size of 30 now. Um, we're going to need some more power uh, to be able to reliably uh, detect that change uh, above uh, from 90 to 95 percent. So let's now move to a sample size of 50 and see how that does for us. That brings the upper warning limit back into view uh, very close to the 100 percent range. Um, we're seeing the shift rule triggered more frequently perhaps. Um, we're occasionally getting signals using that second warning limit, but it's going to take even more power to reliably detect this change. I'm going to move to a sample size of 100. The upper, war the upper control limit is now uh, back in play, uh, but it's uh, up at 99% at this point. So uh, perfect score gets us above that control limit. Um, we're seeing the shift rule pretty reliably executed, uh, uh, triggered here, uh, and we're seeing that the upper warning limit uh, fires uh, uh, occasionally. So the upshot is that the closer you get to perfection, the larger the sample size you need to create a useful p-chart, and uh, the harder it is and more expensive it is uh, to, detect, to, to detect changes up in that region.